colors low on the horizon, just dipping below the tops of the forest to the west. As dusk began, Cassian was sitting in his house, watching the roaring fireplace and lost in many, many thoughts. He didn't notice as a man walked in quietly. Cassian became aware of the man as the sound of the door closing snapped him from his thoughts to the moment at hand. With reactions honed by training and a drive born of steel determination, he had his pistol out and aimed at the door in the flash of an eye, only to find the entire area empty. The door was shut, and only the crackling of the fire could be heard over the beat of his heart in his ears. A moment later, after scanning across the room, he began to holster his pistol and settle back into his seat, only to reverse the action when he noticed someone in the other large chair set to watch the fire. Before he could speak, Cassian recognized his sovereign ally, Han, of Nomad's Forge. Mumbling a curse, he holstered the pistol as Han spoke. Not bad. Can a merchant sell you that? Looks like something he'd sell. Han extended an arm, revealing a large bottle of some faintly shimmering spirit. It's time we had a proper discussion, Cat. You don't mind if I call you Cat, do you? Not at all. Many do. Cathian gestured and a stout drink bar appeared between them, allowing Han to pull both glasses and ice from within as he poured both a drink from the bottle. He slid Cassian's over slowly, warning him to take it easy. Stuff's sold in you are by order, orders of magnitude. Han sniffed the stopper before stuffing it back into the bottle. Setting it down and lifting his own glass, he saluted the younger man. To the heir of Lanth, the lord of Farmhold. To you, Kath. Cathian raised his glass in a semi-shocked response. And to you, lord of Nomad's Forge, ignorance's keeper. To you, Han. As both took a sip and returned their glasses to the table, Han was the first to speak. Well played, Cat. I'll tell you how I know about your line if you tell me how you know about ignorance. His smile was genuine and wide and warm. Cassian's was a much younger mirror of it. One of my advanced statementship units covered the tragedies. That and a little bit of research, it gave me the idea. Cathian lifted and pulled a drink from his glass, with the result being his head swimming in sensation and random memories for a moment as the drink's effects overwhelmed him for a second. What sealed it, he continued, was when you showed up. You are far too familiar with Professor Kennar and far far too potent to be anybody else. You're the only man I've ever seen the professor defer to. Han grinned. Fair enough. I figured it was along those lines. Kanar has never wanted his situation to color the interactions of those he meets. Just wanted to make sure there wasn't someone subverting that simple desire. Han took a sip and held a hand up to forestall Cathian's follow-up. As for your line, your armor, while adaptive and form-shifting, is unique enough for those who know of such things and how to see them. Lance the First is a legend amongst the ancient fame forged. His armor is similarly unmistakable to those who ever saw it in those days. Cathian looked in his glass for the meaning of Han's words as 
it began to reveal itself to him. Cassian looked directly at Han as his question formed, seeming to try to pull the answer from Han's face by gaze alone. How, how, how old are you? Han smiled wide. Old enough to see that on his debut, and to know what most likely was inside that castle. Like I said, your ancestor was a legend. His creations were spoken of even amongst the Analog, most in awe, some in envy. Cassian seemed to retract at the castle's mention. And what did I find? Han looked sympathetic at the defensive younger man. Proof. Not only though the fact that Deep Locks Lord was some sort of distant relation, but that one of your ancestors' creations was used to prepare a calamity we have just gone through. Cassian set his glass on the table and crumpled into his chair. All that effort for nothing. Cass, the number of people who are aware of those facts, beyond the defines, I assume, can be counted on a single hand with room to spare, Han reassured him. But knowing what I do and your selective retelling of your adventure in the castle, it wasn't hard to figure out you were hiding more than just for discovery and recovery of your arm. Again, Cassian looked at the older man in shock, only to see understanding in his eyes. The real thing moves differently. It's subtle, and most can't see it. Han went on. So between the leg on the cosmic ship and the arm you retrieve from the castle, how are you feeling? Better. Less, less discomfort. Kathy flexed his return limbs instinctively, feeling them thrum and pulse with life. A thought came to him. Without the leg on that ship that was besieging you, did they have enough of the combat drugs to even lay a proper long-term siege? Best guess was that they had maybe a week or two in reserve. So no. Most likely, if they could have sustained it, with the forge being shut down due to the calamity. We would have been worn down and crushed in as maybe three weeks at the fastest. They had to go with that multi-wave direct assault because they felt they were on a clock. Once the drugs ran out, so did their enhanced control of the crews. You saw this in the refugees, I assume. Yeah. Day or two after they arrived, they just became much more unruly for a few days. Untrusting of all of us. We, we just assumed it was part of the shock. Shock, plus the mental whiplash and no longer being under the effects of the drug. It encourages adherence to the chain of command and to following orders. I'm glad to hear you're handling it well. You do have quite the city here, Cass. Han changed the subject. Yeah, and we're now responsible for managing the former Deep Locks lands and protecting all of Jamamar from what might crawl out of that hellstorm. Cassian snatched his glass, but took only a small sip. Everyone is looking at us in suspicion, wondering if I had some hand in the calamity or if I will turn farm holds guns on them. True. But such things are not avoidable. You have all the forces and skills needed for your appointed task. And it is the fact that it is obvious you could rain fire down upon anyone. But that does not stop the fact that all the other big boys has the exact capabilities from being true as well. Han smiled again. Except for the home city, no one really thinks about it. 
Of course all of those powerful cities have similar weapons and defenses. Cathian sipped again and thought, before a grin, sorrowful, began to grow. So, it's just theater. I so hate politics. It is going to kill me with stress one of these days, I assure you. <laughs> Not with that armor on, Han spoke. You're likely to outlive your brothers in it. You probably won't feel middle age for a number of centuries. Pretty sure his creator was still quite young looking when he took the posting on the premise. Don't go on with that again, Han. Cathian said, smiling. I want, I want to know. He trailed off, thinking for a moment, seeing that many of his simpler questions had already been answered. After a second, he looked back with a glint in his eye. I want to know what the plan is from here. You and I, we have an alliance. Our two populations trade and work with each other freely. But there's more, isn't there? Han nodded while finishing off his glass and began to pour himself another. Of course. Baumhold is set to become a center of crafting and skill expertise. And the forge? A beating heart of industrial might. There is one more piece to the puzzle for our little ambitions. A population and a reach sufficient to apply these advantages into a real effect. Cathy gave a low whistle and took the last sip of his own drink. And what? He stopped, the drink bringing his thoughts into clarity. The Praetors, the Praetors that are leaving the Lunas. They're following the captain of the warship that showed up at the end of your siege, aren't they? Han looked quite impressed and motioned for Cassian to continue while reaching for his glass. So, you're building them stations or whatever. L likely using the construction of your own defense rings to serve as test beds and for their new inventions and ideas. And no matter how many Praetors there might be, they're still going to need a massive number of other species to work with, to protect, and to live with. From what I've heard of this so-called civil severance of the Praetors, living in isolation is one of, from the rest of the realm's people was uh, was one of the big problems for the ones that want to leave, right? You have heard correctly, and on most of it, you even have it right. Han was practically beaming. There'll be 36 mega stations to start, four for each sector. With the calamity, everyone seems to think we got at most a decade before all the missing planets and systems are back in sync with reality completely. Wait, wait, what? Is, is that what all this is about? Cathian was now lost. He was not generally concerned with the affairs of the stars, but he knew this sounded serious. Han stopped himself. His suspicions were now confirmed, and his annoyance at foe is far away quickly buried under a warm smile as he began to refill Cathian's glass. Cathian, do you know what a ha- Time froze. Nothing moved. Not the flames of the fireplace. Not the drops of condensation on their glasses. Nor the liquid that was supposed to be pouring into Cathian's glass. To those that could act in such alien states, the room almost vibrated with the strain of what was and what could be. Then, into the motionless room, a tall, lanky elf, dressed in dark, professional attire, seemed to just appear, hovering above the two, looking down as if studying some novel or unknown substance. The elf's eyes went from one 
to the other again and again. Y you are fear, impediment, abstraction. The elf son heard mumbles continue. But but not mine. Mine killers, perhaps. But not mine. The elf stopped and spun in the air, looking at the dark yet humanoid cloud of power that had anchored the temporal bubble that held this room frozen. Why, who dares? Oh, what a joke. It is the sun that is forever broke. The mad elf taunted the cloudy being while spinning in his overtly bright and garish attire. Here you appear to play the hero, but we both know that you're but a zero. The elf seemed to shift and shudder, becoming nigh untouchable as the powers of time shrouded his form until he simply vanished. The dark form looked about the room, ensuring no surprises or presents had been left behind, and then left himself, allowing the hiccup in time to resolve with none the wiser, only supremely skilled beings and those tied to time or using special equipment would even notice this temporal event had even happened. Time restarted. Han stopped mid-sentence and Cassian looked up but answered the half-formed query. Hands of destiny? Yeah, who does the no uh, oh, that lefty, that's why. As once more realization dawned on the young man's features. Wait, just, just me? Not my brothers? Why? Han's face was kind. Because, for whatever reason, you, me, at least one other were chosen, and us alone. Does that mean our closest are doomed to die in the furtherance of our duties? I don't know, Cass. I don't. But I hope not. Han set his gaze directly on Cassian. But what I do know is that we are not alone. Like I said, the leader of the new Praetor faction is like us, chosen. And with the way things are progressing, I think I am seeing an outline of things to come. If I'm right, Cassius, we are chosen specifically as to distract any discontent our work might engender solely to us. So the danger comes at us head on. I, that I can deal with. Cassian seemed to relax a bit, as if a forgotten riddle was now solved. I figured, but for one reason or another, it seems it was decided not to tell you. I didn't even know my own status until after I'd helped to rescue you. But you deserve to know, and I will not take that away from you. From what I've figured out about this whole hands thing, we are the ultimate of free agents, Cass. But we've got a threat coming, and it's not a small one. Not all of these systems reuniting are going to be friendly. Some will be uninhabited planets and belts, sure, and those should be the first to show back up if the eggheads are right about all this. Han took a long pull from his glass and sat, contemplating his next words carefully. I've dug up what I could, and as far as anyone knows, gods very much included, there is going to be at least one multi-system culture amongst the systems coming back and they might have some serious issues with the realms. And then there is also the issue of being a similarly sized 
or scaled infestation of Antani, perhaps even actual interstellar infrastructure. Cassian took a drink and let the rush of its effects toy and play with the information that Han had just imparted, and saw a bit of the outline that he had described earlier as well. Well, we're becoming the heads of a bulwark. The station, supplied and led by different powers, a bulwark of the Wild Realms in particular. His smile was almost wolfish. Quite possibly, young man, quite possibly. Han's smile matched that of the young man. And, while we build the wall to defend those outside of Kaisa's shield, we can use it to further our own mission to counter the forces behind all these recent difficulties. But that's going to take years. How will we do both? Ah, <laughs> this is where the hard part comes. Patience. Han smiled wryly. Everything that we've dealt with the past few days and weeks, that's all the result of a lot more decades of planning and trickery. With everything gone so awry, our foe will need to recollect themselves and figure out their own reaction. This is when we build ourselves in expectation of the return, and we maintain our vigilance. Cassian saw the logic and wisdom, as well as the practicality for Han's assertions. Well, uh, how long do you think we have? Han smiled. I'd like to say at least a decade, but the system's returning is going to be long before that. Might be the only stroke of luck our enemy of ours has gotten. Three to five years is the best I can give, Cass, with any certainty. The stations will be built and deployed in only three. I figure you'll have your end of things so long before that. But you did have a head start on us. Han's smile grew only wider as Cassian thought about and realized the truth of Han's compliment. Beyond the current state of integration and rehabilitation for the refugees, Farmhold was now completely free to begin pursuing its founding goals, to be a city of master craftsmen and designers, and those seeking to join and learn from them where Han was both populating and setting up his much larger nomad sparge in so far as governance and function, Cassian was well beyond those starting stages. Cassian had distinguished himself as an apt and gifted administrator, and Han's recognition of that made his smile grow even more. So, we prepare and keep watch. When do I meet our Praetor partner? The drink was beginning to have its effect, and Cassian let it. It was clear the greatest of the reveals were now past. Yes, prepare, repair, and make sure that farm hold is ready. As for meeting Optor, he had a bit of business of his own to attend to. I only had a chance for a quick discussion with him in person so far. As soon as that is settled, we'll both get to have a uh, proper introduction. The assurance was exactly what Cassian needed to hear. He knew the effects of the drink were to why he was keeping such a level head after being revealed as a hand of destiny, and he was thankful for it as they continued to speak of things great and subtle. Hours later, Cassian, who was very much drunk, attempted to bring their meeting to a close. Han. He began. Are we going to be having these little talks often? No, nah, not too often, but I'll be by regularly, Han replied. And you are always welcome at the forge, by the way. Are you always going to bring um, that stuff? This? Oh, no, 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 no. 
Han chuckled. This is for special occasions. I have plenty of other options for our future meetings. So, we're just gonna hunker down and build? For now. We'll know more after Optal finishes his duties and returns. Do we... Do we know who the villain we're judging the face is? I think I know who we're supposed to believe is the villain. Catching and thought about that for a long moment. Eyes staying slightly more closed, slightly longer with each blink. Cat, cat's paw or unknowing victim? Both, I think. Not enough to be sure of that, Han admitted. I don't have all the pieces. Hell, we barely got any. C can, can we win? <laughs> Without a doubt, Cap. Good. Good. Cassian began to murmur, beginning to drift deep into slumber. Han looked at his watch with a smile and cleared the glasses and replaced the table as Cassian's soft snore began to sound. Picking up the bottle and turning to leave, he smiled, quite impressed with how the boy took the truth, drink or not. Perhaps they had a chance after all. If you'd like to contribute to the further exploration and explanation of the realms, please consider leaving a comment, a like, and sharing the video around. I read all the comments and make efforts to reply to each. Thank you for helping to grow the channel and know I look forward to each and every one of your comments. Other methods of support can be found in the channel's description. Thank you for watching.